What's up, everybody? We are here for round number four. Four. Um, so we are going to be working on building a weapon for our little blob over here to kill the other blob. Yes, there's so many blobs in here. Um, all right. So let's get right into it. We are going to have to do a bunch of things. First thing first, we need to bring in an actual gun. So if you look over here under sprites and under environment, no, under characters, there is this little character hero with the whole bunch of multiple uh, things in here. But if you drag it in, it'll drag in a bazooka. That's because it's a multiple sprite thing. And that's why when you let go of it on the scene, it says, oh, do you want to create an animation? We do not want to create an animation. So we're going to click cancel. But you'll still get the bazooka. Now we could place the bazooka right here. Now let's make it so it's behind the character by just making our Z axis position one. There we go, it's behind. Uh, another thing we have to make sure is that our camera is, if you click the main camera over here, that it is in um, orthographic. Whoa, yikes, <laughs> orthographic view. So let's make sure that's true. Uh, and then we can kind of position the bazooka as well as we want. So let's put it like right here. Um, we're going to have to drag the bazooka onto the player. So now it's the child of the player. So if you click the player and move the player, you can see the bazooka move with it. That's cool. Um, the next thing we need to do is actually create a little point where our bullets are going to be spawning. And we want that to happen um, right in front of the bazooka. So let's right click the bazooka and create click uh, create empty. Let's give this a uh, name like bullet spawn pause. You see there's no spaces, just capital letters for the first word, except the very first word. <laughs> Press enter on that. So now we have the player. Under that, we have bazooka. Under that, we have the bullet spawn position. So let's drag that bullet spawn position to where we want the position to be, which will be right about here. That's good. All right, so cool. Now we have the player bazooka. So now we can start creating the two i think we probably need two scripts all right so the first thing we need to do is create um actually you know what we're going to do first first thing we're going to do if you press play you'll see everything moving with our player but we're not turning how this is turning no go away go away um so let's do that let's get our character turning first okay so i'm gonna go and let's see do do do, do. okay actually shouldn't be that bad let's go under our player script in our update function, right after our jump code, let's put a bunch of enters. Make sure it's after the little parentheses or the curly braces there. Let's do a comment line. So let's do forward slash forward slash, and we can do do let's do uh, let's just call it um, change directions. Okay, then we can start doing our little code. So let's do an if statement again. Uh, we can already check which direction we're going by checking our movement. So let's do movement is greater than zero. That means we're going right, if you remember. So let's open the curly braces and press enter. Make sure it's well formatted, otherwise code gets all mushy. <laughs> so first thing we need in here is a vector three. Um, if you remember, the way we change the scale, and we did it for enemy, is uh, we have to do this little three lines. We can't just directly change the value, remember? We have to assign it and then reassign it, which is kind of stupid, but that's just how it is. So vector three, and then we're going to do dot. And well, actually, no, we're not doing dot. What am I doing? <laughs> this is a variable we're creating. So let's call it player scale. Cool. We're going to set that equal to the transform dot, uh, I think local scale. Yeah, local scale. <clears throat> so our bodies, our, our characters, local scale. Let's end that with a semicolon. <clears throat> right below that, we're going to do player scale. So now we're modifying the variable we just created, dot x equals. Now, we could just put negative 1. But then if you decide to change the size of this character, then it won't be 1 anymore, and it'd be all weird. So another smarter way of doing it is just to do player scale dot x. So it's setting equal to itself. Make sure to end with a semicolon. Uh, but instead of doing it equal to itself, we're going to do a negative. So now it's going to be equal to itself negative. Cool. Um, I'm wondering the only issue might that be that it might be just flipping all over because we're going to be increasing. This is going to run every frame if you remember an update. So it might just go flip, 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 flip. <laughs> every second is going to keep giving us a negative. So that might cause issues. So let's just for safety do negative one because we know we need to stay at negative one. Okay. So now that we have the proper value, we need to assign it back to the player. So we're just going to do transform dot local scale what we had right here, but we're going to set that equal to player 
uh, is it player? Yeah, player scale. That's it. So remember, vector three is three values. This has three values in it because outside the scale has one, two, and three values. We're just changing the x value. That's what we do right here. And then once we have that value in here, we can assign it right back to the position or the scale. Cool. And then let's create an else in here. So right after the curly braces, else if so open parentheses, close parentheses, movement is less than zero. Um, and then open again, curly braces, press enter. It should automatically format. Um, now, if you remember, or if you, if you notice, we are actually, we are either checking for greater than zero or less than zero. We're never checking actually for zero. And that would be like when we're not touching any of the direction keys. So, but that's fine. We don't need to deal with that. So we're just going to copy this whole code right here and paste it in here. Cool. Uh, instead of, but I just, I just realized this, since we're going right here, we don't need to be negative one. We need to be one. This is going to be negative one. Okay. Um, one more thing I'm going to do here is not for now, but we'll need this later. Let's create a public variable, public bool and call it going right. Okay. Um, although I think, uh, yeah, so let's set it equal to true because we want it originally to be set to true. So if I don't touch any of the directions, originally we're facing right, right? So there you go. <laughs> uh, in here, we're going to do right after, before the curly braces, but after this um, semicolon, we're going to do a going right equals true. Copy this line over here, equal false. Save it and leave it to go. So now if you press play, you'll see that we can go like this. Go left, go right, and still die from this guy. <laughs> but cool, all right, that's good. Now we can start uh, spawning our bullet. So let's go ahead and create our bullet. I think under props, you'll see there's a rocket. And it's gigantic, but that's cool. <laughs> so prop, crate drop, no, not that. Uh, but, 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 uh, this one, part rocket. Uh, let's click it over here and change the name to bullet even though it's not a bullet, let's be real here. Um, but that's okay. Uh, we know we have to give it a few things. So let's add a component. We know we have to give it a collider. Box collider 2D, make sure it's aligned properly, the green box, that's good. Um, the other thing we're gonna have to give this is a bullet script. So we haven't created that yet. So let's make that, let's just click add component, bullet script. And I, I just realized you guys don't see that, but make sure you don't put any spaces in your name. Press enter and then C sharp. Okay, and now you can see the name I give it. Not that name, <laughs> this name, the small b and the capital S. Double click that. And okay, now we have a fresh script here for bullet. Uh, we do need one for bazooka as well. So before we create that script, what we're going to do is make this bullet into a prefab. If you remember prefab, we made one for the, oh, I don't know why I have this here. Go away. Uh, if you remember, we have one for the floor. I'm not sure if you guys made that or not, but Prefabs just basically mean you can drag and drop and then if you change one of them, they will all change and that's what we want If you ever wanted to change the value of one, you know how the bullets work We just change one of the bullets and all the bullets will change So let's drag the bullet from here right into the prefab folder. Now we have uh, the bullet Cool, so we can delete this one uh, Actually, so the way you change it because we don't want it to be this big, right? So let's scale it So if you press R while selecting the bullet, you'll get the scale. Let's drag it from the white box smaller something like that right and then press w to move it and we can see how it's going to look looks good to me all right um now we can click apply so when you click apply it's going to change the prefab so if i drag another one you can see it's small now cool uh so we have the components here we have the collider okay let's delete that let's create the bazooka script so click the bazooka click add component and then uh b a z o o k a and script with a capital S, no spaces. Press enter, press enter. I don't know why it doesn't record that, <laughs> sorry about that. And then you can see the name here and then double click this. Now we have a bazooka script. So now what we can do is actually go ahead and start writing our bazooka script. It shouldn't be too long. There are certain things we have to be careful of. Like, you know, sometimes if you if you remember, or not remember, but like if you, if you try to think about it, we're not changing, you have to change the direction and which direction is going. So we have to make it face, if we're going left, we have to make it face left and we have to make it go left. Same thing for right. If we're going right, we have to make it face right. 
and go right. Those are the two things we have to do, right? So in our bazooka script, we are gonna start um, coding. Let's put a bunch of variables that we know we're gonna need. For example, we need a public game object with a capital G um, bullet. So this is the thing that's gonna be spawning, right? Um, the next thing we need our bazooka to do is uh, have the position where it's gonna spawn. So let's do a public again, game object again, and bullet small b capital s spawn pos position okay so that's the name for the variable which is type of game object okay so the last one we need is a player so we need to be able to access our player so let's do public game object again and let's just call him player right small p um, the last thing we're gonna have to create is actually the variable type of the script now this is something we haven't done so see the name over here player script and remember we created a variable in here going right we want to check that variable in this other script so the way we do that is if you notice the name of uh, the script over here we can actually access this script and we know the script is on the player that's why we got the player over here so all we have to do is create a variable for that script so let's just make a private it could be public but private you know because we know we're only using it in here so let's again after the private or public we put what type of variable it is and this one is not going to be game object or float or bool it's going to be a player script which is exactly the name we have for our script over here cool now we can give it our own name so that was the type and um, we're going to call it um player s for player script okay so now we have to start assigning some of the variables these ones we can just assign outside if you remember in unity this was private so we have to get this ourselves so let's because you couldn't just drag and drop well technically you could drag and drop that too but you should know how to be able to grab it from inside the script as well so let's do player s that's what we call the variable set it equal to player dot get component if you remember so we're getting from the player that we have we're getting the component uh, what is the component the component is player script that's the script so we're getting the script from the player and then open and close parentheses semicolon always <laughs> okay um let's see if i'm forgetting something no okay so now we have the player uh well actually no let's go back into unity and you'll see all the variables the public variables show up here so we can start drag and dropping them in we know the bullet is in our prefab folder let's drag that in the bullet spawn is over here under the bazooka the player is right here so player so now we have all of the things that we need so let's go back in here and let's actually spawn our bullet so the way of doing that first we have to do is check if we're actually pressing a key so let's do an if open close parentheses input now we've done this before input dot get key not get well not get key or get key up we need get key down so you can't just hold the button to fire a million of them let's get get key down and which key so open close parentheses again and we're just going to put in quotes small r we wanted to fire with r it's not the best button but it's a button <laughs> you can put it to whatever you want so then close the parentheses close the parentheses we're not going to do semicolon because it's an if statement open the curly braces because now we have to do what is going to happen if we're pressing r well we want to bullet the spawn but before we spawn the bullet we need to see which direction we're going to go in or which direction our player is going in so we can um, make our bullet spawn in that direction okay uh, well it's gonna spawn in the right place but it's not gonna be facing the right place or the right way right so let's spawn it by saying if mm, yeah if so let's check the players position or which direction the player is going so player s is the script that has that variable called going right if you remember we made that variable so this is it tells us if we're going right or if we're not going right so back in the bazooka script player s dot going right then we can spawn the bullet to face right so the way we um, spawn the bullet is um, by typing instantiate that's just another word for spawning so let's do capital I instantiate it should autocorrect for you and then inside of it we're gonna put in what are we spawning right and it even says object and we know we want to spawn this object right here so we're just gonna type in bullet because that's what is up there remember we dragged and dropped it in so we're gonna do comma so we're spawning that but where are we spawning that we're spawning that at the 
bullet spawn position so bullet spawn position but that's just the game object we want the position of that game object so we're going to do um, that game objects transform which is the body and then position dot position so the um, bullet spawn game object its body is position okay and the last thing we need to put in this is um, what rotation we want it to be now this is a confusing line but we don't actually want it to rotate we just want it to be straight for now um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this thing called quaternion now that's confusing as heck but all that means is rotation <laughs> it's a fancy word for rotation basically um, it should autocorrect for you, but make sure the spelling is correct if it does not autocorrect for some reason. And quaternion is a variable, and we're going to do dot identity. So that just means keep whatever the rotation it has, just keep that rotation. We do not want to touch it. Okay, so end this statement with a semicolon after the parentheses. And so that's going to make it spawn. Actually, you can even test that if you go back in Unity. As long as we're facing right, which we know we are, if you press R, well, look at that bullet spawns but if we're facing left nothing happens <laughs> so let's make something happen there as well we're going to do an else after the curly braces and let's open and close our curly braces sorry and then in the this little area we're just going to spawn it again but this time we have to change the scale if you remember we're going to do exactly what we did for our player okay but to change the scale or any property of the object we're spawning this is just spawning it but once it's spawned, there's no way to access it. So we need to be able to store that um, spawned bullet in a, just a temporary variable so we can kind of mess with it. So we're going to store it. We know it's spawning a game object, right? Because that's what we're telling it to spawn. So game object, let's call it new bullet. So new capital B bullet equals. Uh, so now we can just copy this code. So spawn it exactly the same way then store it in this variable so we can change it okay so next line we're gonna actually copy it from our player script if you go back in our player script and we have these three lines remember this is how we or this one I guess the negative one is how we change the scale of the the player so we're gonna do the same thing over here so copy these three lines bring it back into the bazooka script paste it right after this but this is the variable names are all wrong so we need to fix that we know that um, the transform, we don't need the bazooka's transform because remember, we're in the bazooka right now. We don't need to change the bazooka's transform, we need to change the bullet's transform. So copy the new bullet over here, paste it right before the transform, and put a dot. So now we have the bullet's body's scale. Same thing over here when we're assigning it back, new bullet dot transform. The next thing we need to change is the variable name. We could keep it the same, but that doesn't make sense because it's not the player scale, it's the bullet scale. So let's do bullet scale. And then just simply copy that word, double click, control C, paste it over here and paste it over here. Um, the only other thing we need to do is make sure it's not negative one because if you go back and check our bullet, if you drag it in from the prefab folder, drag it in from the prefab folder, you'll see it's not one. So if you make a negative one, it's gonna be all weird, see? So we need it to be negative 3.7, whatever. Um, let's go ahead and delete this bullet from the scene. If you go in here, uh, so instead of negative one, we're gonna do what we were gonna do originally for the player. Just copy the same line and paste it here. So bullet scale dot X, but we want the negative of it. And you know this is only gonna happen once because um, once it's already there, it's just gonna stay there. It's, it's not running again and again. It's only happening once when we press the R, okay? So that's going to spawn our bullet in the proper direction. It's control S, go back into Unity, and you'll see it should be working fine. Let's see. You can spawn it here, you can spawn it here. And I'm stuck because they have colliders. <laughs> but I can keep spawning it, see, in the right direction. So the only thing now left is to do is to make them move or go in that direction. So for that, we need to access our bullet script. Right, yes. So that's the last script we have to make. And that, honestly, we can it's going to be a lot of copy-pasting, so it shouldn't take so long. So let's go and finish that up. Let's go in our, where did we put it? If you go in prefabs, bullets, you'll see the bullet script over here. Double-click it. Okay. Now we can uh, do this. So same thing here. We're going to need a couple of variables. We're going to need a public float speed. So that's the, going to be the speed, the, how fast the bullet is going. Next thing we need is the same thing basically we did over here in the enemies, uh, sorry, in the bazooka script is the, we, we need the script from the player to check which direction the player is going. 
So let's just copy these two lines, the player and the player S. Bring them over to the bullet script. Boom, right? Now, remember, we have to assign this variable. This one we can drag in. Uh, and this one we need to... Actually, for this one, we might also have to do it here because the thing is, this bullet is in the prefab folder. It's not in the scene. So we can't just drag and drop because if you go over here, it won't let you drag and drop because look, <laughs> well, the variable's not there yet, but you can't, you can't drag and drop here regardless. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign it inside the script. So let's just copy, um, well, this line we know we need from the bazooka script. So let's go in the bazooka script, copy this start line in the start function, paste it in the start function. Cool. Uh, and then let's do the same thing for the player but it's going to be slightly different. We need to do player. Actually, we have to do it before this because otherwise it won't know what player is. So let's do player before this uh, equals. What is equal? We need to find that game object on the scene. So we're going to do game object with a capital G. I know there's a small G too, but this is, we're going to do the capital G. Capital G dot find capital F open parentheses and in quotes, we're going to put player. Now this name has to be exactly the same as the player on the scene, which is this. You can see it's called player with a capital P. So we just copy it or just know what it is and paste it right here. So now we have all the content we need to do this. And I think we only need like two, three more, more lines to, I mean, to move the bullet is just like one line, but we need to make sure which direction we're going in first, right? Which is what we're going to do with the script. So in the start function still, we're going to do if player s dot going right which is again in the player script going right variable we're gonna say so if we're going right then the bullet should go right going right oh oh i forgot one variable we need we need to have a variable to tell our bullet which direction we're going in so let's create a private variable over here it's going to be the same thing as we did in the player script we're going to create a boolean said and call it going right okay we don't have to set it equal to anything because it'll happen right as soon as the game starts or when the bullet is spawned. So over here, we're going to do going right equals true, not player dot s dot going right. That's the player's um, direction. We need the bullet's direction. So going right is the one we created right here. And then else. So if we're not, if the player is not going right, open, close curly braces, we are going to say going right equals false. Okay. So now we have which direction is our player going? So which direction should our bullet go? Well, wherever where our player is going, okay? So in the update, now we can move it accordingly. So this is the last thing we need here. So if if the bullet is going right, so not player.s going right, just us going right, then move the bullet right. Now we're gonna do the same thing we did for the enemy. If you remember, we did uh, transform.translate, this line, okay? So let's just copy this line over here uh, da -ba -dee, da -ba -dee, da -ba -da. yes actually we're going to simplify it a bit this is i don't know why i did it like this we can make it way more easy so let's go into bullet so going right we're going to do transform which is the body dot translate and then we're going to inside the parentheses we're going to put in vector three dot right okay and then we're going to multiply that by the speed and then multiply that by time dot delta time and then end it with a semicolon okay because this is this is if you don't multiply that by and then it goes all crazy so go right multiply by the speed multiply by the time okay and then we're gonna we need to do for the left side as well so else open close curly braces and then basically just copy this line and paste it in there but instead of right go left and that is it. <laughs> That's a lot of code for one video, and I know it can get confusing. So hang in there. Uh, a lot of the code is actually the same as we do else places. We just have to do it again and again and again and again. So let's check it out. If we go here, press R. Oh, it's not moving. We'll fix it. So as always, you know, knowing me and my stupid mistakes, we didn't give bullet a speed. Okay, so just click the bullet in the prefab and then give it a speed of like, I don't know, 15. <laughs> uh, and you can see the player is actually not assigned here because we didn't assign it here. It's in the script. If you go in bullet, 
you can see right here we assigned it heck yeah let's go back in here we don't have to apply anything because we're doing changing it here click play and press r boom die you fool oh we haven't made the death happen but get away from me get away from me and then we can face it and point anywhere we oh it's hitting us <laughs> that's where we're going all sideways but we'll fix a bunch of those things don't you worry people but for now it's good enough for this time so next time we'll let, actually let this kill him um, fix some of the collision issues because you see the bullets actually hitting us as well um, so stuff like that will fix and us falling all that fixes coming up next all right so see you that time